I started at KPBS when I was a student at San Diego State University. And I started as a student and I got a Corporation for Public Broadcasting grant and I became full-time staff photographer. And I learned that when you use the media to tell stories and you combine facts and people's uh, experiences and art, you have a very powerful tool for change and opening up people to have a better life. So now what kind of changes were you trying to instigate? Well, I started with Home Street Home in 1984 and uh, my friend Fran Adler and I were in a political science class and uh, the Attorney General of the United States said there was no hunger, no documentable hunger in the United States. And we knew that wasn't true. I was living close to downtown and I saw people. I was a single mom. And so I started going out in the mornings photographing people and my, my friend Fran, she started recording stories and interviews with them. And then we put together, we got a grant and we put together an exhibition. The mayor initiated a task force because of our work. Wadi Dedas, people saw it and took it to Sacramento and all of a sudden people were paying attention to legislation that he had to help people that were living on the streets get help. And so, wow. And what I learned is it's a formula that is a way for people to be educated through the heart. That that is the way. You don't feel like people are preaching to you. You get to hear the stories and make your own mind up. But you have this beauty that pulls you in and opens your heart. So, Home Street Home was the first exhibition, and then we did Struggle to be Born, which was on lack of prenatal care. Because um, they didn't have enough doctors, but they did have midwives, but they wouldn't let the midwives help. So there were all these complex things. There's still such complexity to healthcare that people don't trust it. But what I learned is when you do research, and then you make a project that brings in stories and tells people real life experience. People can then hear it and feel it. And so that was responsible in Sacramento for Senator Calais initiating legislation to increase the reimbursement rate for Medi-Cal. KPBS, where I worked for 10 years, they uh, they did a program and the, all the doctors in San Diego, the OBGYNs, they voted to each take one or two non-paying patients a month just to help. So art can make a difference and that's what I learned. I met President Clinton on a town hall meeting. NBC brought me there and Fran to Sacramento, and uh, they enlarged to eight and 13 feet some of my photographs, and they hung them behind President Clinton. And then Fran and I gave him a book. And it, it's from our exhibition, A Matriot's Dream Healthcare for All. And that is actually from a very personal experience. I left KPBS in 1989 to do my art full time because I had a small grant to do a book on drug and alcohol use and the whole cycle of child abuse with Fran. And I got ovarian cancer six months later. And I had a doctor walk away from me. I had a social worker tell me I had to be terminal. I had to move back to San Diego where my friends and support system were so that I could get care. And so Fran and I, when I got well a year later, did an exhibition called A Matriot's Dream Healthcare for All. And that's why President Clinton and NBC had our photographs. Senator Kennedy had, was in front of photographs. We took it to Washington DC and it was part of a, several national conferences was at Harvard because educating people about people being turned away and all the reasons that they are being turned away, it's important. So your personal experiences, you know, getting ill like that and having to actually um, learn firsthand what the system is really about and how it wasn't really helping people. So you were able to turn your artwork and to use that as a tool to open people's eyes for real change.
and I was fortunate enough to work with you um, recently doing the panel for the discussion on at-risk autistic youth and I know that your granddaughter is uh, a real big proponent in that and she's an ambassador for the Compassionate Arts of San Diego which is I'm so proud of Madison it was a pleasure meeting her and seeing her work So you have been helping people to learn coping skills through art as well. That's right. Um, I There was a point where I looked at my national work after a decade, actually 20 years of working nationally. And I realized that it was very empowering and rewarding to actually work one-on-one -on -one with people and you know life we need a balance right so <laughs> um, and I have two granddaughters that are part of the youth mental health discussions in with Compassionate San Diego, Compassionate Arts, and Compassionate California. There's a lot of compassion going on join us. With, anyway so um, so yes what I found is that often if you use the arts to open up people's feelings so they, they understand why they feel angry or depressed. It's a first step to healing. I started painting angels and animals and I work in my beautiful garden and, and I love Fallbrook and um, I just think that um, when you love your family and you love your friends, it's important to find where you want to make a difference. And for me, I did a lot of work nationally, and now I focus on community and family, families <laughs> and kids. Because I'm telling you, with COVID, kids, the suicide rate and the fear and anxiety is, it's up. It's skyrocketing. It's really terrible. Yes. I mean. And, um, and I see it a lot and I, I worry. And so it's not something that you can do one time. We need help. We need people that will continue to come and talk and help and share and love with compassion. Why don't you tell me about the people that you collected for that panel? Because they were all from all over. Oh my goodness. Well, so there were four panels. Um, and the panel that you were on was on understanding autism and its connection to health. Because a lot of people don't get that. One out of 68, is it? Uh, children are diagnosed with autism or being on the spectrum. And so Madison is now just turned 18 and uh, she struggled. She's been in special ed the, uh, since the second grade. And now she's becoming an advocate and she thinks about all the things that she would like to see changed and how things might get better. And really, um, when you think about it, you have choices. You can either choose to uh, dwell on the things that are wrong or you can dwell on the things that you can change, right? And so, um, I choose to try to dwell on the good things and the beauty. And, um, and I have to even remind myself sometimes that I should go out and paint because this is stressful. I've been watching the news too much, right? <laughs> so you um, give yourself a reprieve. I do. Take a break from that really ugly, bad news and go into the reality of your life and, and fill it with positive light and fresh air and art. That's right. And That's... that keeps you healthy. Can you uh, share with us why it's so important for you to stay extra healthy because of some of the things that you've gone through? Yeah, I turn um, I turn 70 in February. Congratulations, <laughs> by the way. It's hard to believe. Uh, I feel like I've had four or five different lifetimes, but... Um, How fortunate for you. Yes, I've had ovarian cancer and bladder cancer. How and, unfortunate. Um, yes, and, and I overcame ovarian cancer 30 years ago, so that's gone. Um, the bladder cancer I had a year and a half ago, and so I am still, you know, having to be vigilant and get tests and things like that. You never know how much time you really have. You can hope, 
you can do the best. I eat well, I try to eat organic, I take a lot of supplements, and, <laughs> and I do art, right? You know, art has been shown, paint just painting, even if you're not painting anything, if you're just painting colors, it's been shown in many studies, especially in Canada, they found this, to help people heal in amazing ways. I mean, sometimes they didn't even need the surgery anymore because they just painted their emotions out of their body or their illness. And so, unfortunately, in our society, we don't take art seriously enough. Or maybe we think of it as something just you say, you just hang on the wall behind your sofa. And that's fine. That's a wonderful thing for you to see every day. And it should be inspiring and loving. But it also, it's, there's the process of art. When you actually paint or draw or photograph or video, something that makes you admire the beauty in the everyday moments, it helps your body. It lowers your blood pressure. There are all kinds of things. Look it up. Um, that, that being creative is part of your soul. And that's what I believe. I can't not be creative. <laughs> Ask my family. <laughs> I remember, I was thinking this morning that when my daughter was 16, I made a, a cake in the shape of a car and I put a little photograph of her in the driver's seat, you know? And, uh, and even though she's a, you know, a CFO of an international company now, she is very creative when she does things. And my son is creative with his photography and video. Um, they're both in business, but they use the arts all the time to be creative and to feel good. And, and our family parties and gatherings are just wonderful. So this post came from a youth summit that Compassionate Arts in Compassionate California did in Los Angeles. It's a memorial post in honor of those who taught us how to love. And on this post, police, LAPD, youth of different nationalities, teachers, artists, community leaders, football people, <laughs> we all put, um, we all put our hands and a saying or a name in them. So this is in honor of the ones who left. And um, some of them are sad and some of them honor the dedication that they had. I really like the top of this one, which is healing a nation, because I believe that in order to heal, you have to be able to talk about an issue. And that's one of the problems that I see is happening in our society right now. People aren't able to talk, they're afraid to talk about what's happening or what they're feeling.